This episode is supported by FX's Grotesquerie, a new series from executive producer Ryan Murphy. Heinous crimes unsettle a small community, and the local detective feels these atrocities are eerily personal, as if someone or something is taunting her. Starring Nisi Nash Betts, Courtney B. Vance, Leslie Manville, and Travis Kelsey. FX's Grotesquerie premieres September 25th on FX. Stream on Hulu. From around the world, this is the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Strong themes. Oof! And coarse language may apply. Damn it. This is Comedy Forecast, episode 652, virtually live from DragonCon 2020. The Comedy Forecast Network. Let's dog ear this for now. Oh, hi, Clinton here. Welcome to or welcome back to Comedy Forecast. Every year, I join fellow podcasters Chuck Tomasi and Craig Stepp of Technorama for a live show at DragonCon in Atlanta. But this year, DragonCon, like so many other conventions, was handled as an online convention. Fortunately, Charles McFall and everyone else working on the digital media track were able to put all the pieces together that allowed us to do our live show via Zoom, streamed over Twitch. What you're about to hear is the 50-minute panel, but I thought I'd share with you a few behind-the-scenes facts and stories as we go through the show. I also have the video version of the show available over at ComedyForecast.com. Just look for the DragonCon 2020 post. Okay, since the show was virtual, Chuck, Craig, and I wanted to do a unique opening— I envisioned it as a cross between the opening number of an Oscar show and a three-ring circus. I wrote an opening song and sketch to get the show underway. I'll be back in a little while with some more information. Let's start things off with the traditional opening number. We were headed down to Dragon Con to do our live show. When something awful happened and just wouldn't you know... We were in lockdown, not even the same town. It would seem that all our schemes were now a no-go. But you know we ain't no quitters, we just won't give up now. We plan to entertain you still, and here is just how. Our show is a live stream, like some kind of web dream. I said web dream. Now look up, way up, and see how Chuck is a pro. Ladies and gentlemen, I direct your attention up, way up, some 60 feet in the air. Mr. Chuck Tomasi will now perform his world-famous high wire act. I don't remember the wire being this high up during rehearsal. And he will do it without a net. What? Uh, okay. Anything for our fans. Besides, what's the worst that can happen? I mean, besides falling to my death. Here goes. Hey, I think I've got it. This is easy. All that martial arts training has finally paid off. Look, just one foot. Just, just the other foot. And the extra tricky bit. No feet. Now, Chuck will increase the level of difficulty by continuing across the high wire while being chased by a bear. A what? Easy, big fella. Do you want to get by? I, I can pull over. Hey, now. Stop shaking the wire. I'm likely to... A doctor in the house? I'm a vet. Thank you for your service. No, a veterinarian, you oh, stupid... Oh, right over here, doctor. Yep. His leg is broke, all right. Pity. I've seen this kind of thing before. I can tell you there's only one humane thing to do in a case like this. Doc, no! Make him a splint. What did you think I meant? 
Oh, I see. Wow, you people are the worst. Okay, Doc, you You take take care care of that that while while I get get back back to the show. show. Yeah, whatever, it wasn't that good. Okay, he'll be fine. Give it some time. What else have we got? Oh, right, Craig's here all set to go to give it a shot. He's not programming or camera camming. Toss some sand right on that stage because his feet are hot. Ladies and gentlemen, now on the center stage, performing some classic soft shoe, Mr. Craig Stepp. Hey, what do you know? I'm doing it. I'm pretty good. Let's try something a little harder. Okay, and big finish. Craig, watch out for the engine blow. Ah! Doc! Again? Wow, does Ocean know about this place? All right, let's, let's take a look. Oh, his leg is broken, too. Yep, like I said, there's only one humane thing to do. Right, a splint. Well, not really. I was talking about... (laughs) Doc, no! Okay, fine, fine, fine. I'll make a splint. You people are no fun. Right, let's Let's take take it home. home. So, now, we're all here. I think that's clear. We're ready to roll. Let's start the show and hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop the music. What's wrong? What talent are you going to show off? Yeah. You had us do all these crazy bits. What about you? Look, guys, I was busy writing this song. I didn't have time to come up with a stunt. Oh, don't worry. We picked one out for you. All you have to do is lie down. Oh, that sounds easy. Sure. Now let's help you inside the cannon. What? Cannon? Uh, no, uh, you guys shouldn't even be standing up. You know, y- your legs. Oh, don't worry about us. Guys, guys, let me out of here. No problem. Light the fuse, Craig. Roger, Roger. Say hello to everyone in Dayton. Dayton? I'll be back! And now, it's time for Technorama Comedy Forecast and Friends, virtually live from Dragon Con 2020. Yeah, if Clint never makes it back here. Well, the beauty of a virtual convention, he can do his part from Dayton. Hey, that's right. Okay, play us out, guys. We wanted to create a sort of alternate reality for this virtual show. It was hard to find an inroad into that, but I took a stab at it with my opening monologue. Well, hello, my name is Clinton, and welcome to Dayton. Uh, I mean, welcome to the Technorama Comedy Forecast and Friends live panel from Virtually Dragon Con. It's where our two podcasts come together, kind of like two magnets, or like when you get super glue on your fingertips, you know, and they get stuck together and you're not sure, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to put on gloves again. And then I get, I'm sorry, where was I? Oh, right. During the combined show, every year, I start the show with a look back at what's happened in the past 12 months since we were all together. And to make things easy this year, I kept a journal. All right, so let's see what happened over the past year. September 3rd, 2019. Dear Journal, arrived home from Dragon Con, lots of laundry. Also forgot to put food in the fish tank before I left. I only see Swimmy in the tank right now, and he's looking kind of plump. And uh, let's skip ahead a little bit from there. Uh, October 31st, 2019. Dear Journal, small Halloween turnout. We bought enough candy for 50 kids. Hey, don't judge. It was on sale. Don't want to end up eating all this candy, putting it in the freezer for next Halloween. I'm sure Halloween 2020 will be amazing. Oh, and it's cool watching the first all-female spacewalk. Props to Jessica Meir and Christina Koch. Also, the new fish are doing okay, but Swimmy seems to be eyeing them. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Uh, December 25th, Christmas was great. Always fun to have the family over, passed around popcorn, and watched the Christmas Carol. Ghost of Christmas Future is scary as ever. I'd hate to live through something that depressing. Oh, and uh, Google launched its Stadia gaming system. 
it'll probably be the only system that gamers are talking about all next year. February 26, 2020. Dear Journal, just got all of our savings into those stock markets because they are rising. Can't wait for the money to start rolling in. Also, talk to Chuck and Craig. They want to use a new system to record the topic as Trek, the show we do together. Wasn't interested. Where else am I ever going to use a program called Zoom? Ah, brand new batch of fish, nowhere to be found in the tank. Swear I heard swimmy belch. Hmm. Came across that huge bag of Halloween candy in the freezer. Need to remember it's there for next Halloween. February 27th, 2020. Things started off bad today. Stock market kept falling because of worldwide pandemic. But then, but then, started binge eating. And, and I swear, it was like the earth went through some kind of cleansing ion storm. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's what happened. And now everything is fine. It's fine. Uh, wait, when did I get this goatee? March 26, 2020. Can't believe how insane things are in the world. Picard is now an android? What is happening? No, 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 no. Time to break open that chocolate. June 30th, 2020. So much fun going to see that double bill feature of Wonder Woman 1984 and Black Widow at the AMC Theater. Yeah, the place was packed. <laughs> Brought my own candy and swimmy. <laughs> P.S. may have eaten swimmy. Uh, August 1st, 2020. That all the reality tried to break through again. It took a lot of candy to make it go away. <laughs> All candy gone, but more. All that's gone too. September 4th, 2020. Very strange. The powers that be have decided to do a dry run of the entire Dragon Con online over Labor Day weekend. <laughs> Must keep other reality at bay all weekend. Think happy thoughts. La, 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 la. Need help with effort. So now turning things over to my friends from Technorama, Chuck and Craig, take it away. All right. This is a segment of the show we, uh, we call On This Day in History. But since we're in this alternate history, we're doing it our way. So strap in. There we are. That sounds more like it. Yeah. On this day in history for September 6, 2020. This is September 6, 2020. It is the 249th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar. There are just 117 days remaining in the year. It was on this date in 1970 that something happened involving dirigibles because there's always something happening involving dirigibles. Yes, and it was also on this date in 1992 that former Russian leader Mikhail Gorbachev donated his port wine stain to the University of Moscow. Okay. 192 years ago today, the Great Lakes were drained for cleaning. Who knew? And September 6th, 1960, three presidents were elected in an awkward election year gaffe. Not just because it was in September, but uh, anyway. Later in the secret meeting at the White House, they played rock, paper, scissors to determine a winner. And to ensure fairness, it was best out of three, double elimination. I'll go with that. Yeah. Hey, what could be worse, right? A pandemic? Oh, don't ask. <laughs> it was also on this date that Jimmy Dean accidentally founded his sausage empire. He started as a well-renowned cotton farmer when he was cleaning his mechanical cotton picker. And one of his farm animals got caught in the... Wow. Some people believe anything on the internet. Let's move on. Yeah. The first smartwatch was invented on this date in 1971. People lined up for blocks to buy one for the low price of $4.95. It weighed three pounds and the battery lasted only for 12 hours. Sold. Today in 1963, Speedy Gonzalez was awarded the overall best time in the Boston Marathon. And the first electric car was unveiled at the Detroit Auto Show on this date in 1957. It broke the record for distance for an electric vehicle traveling a total of 22 feet, or for everybody else in the world, 6.7 meters. The next year, they beat it by one foot, breaking the fabled seven-meter barrier by using a longer extension cord. It can't be done, Marty. I'm telling you, seven Ooh. meters. <laughs> <laughs> Casino owner and magnate. Biff Tannen, wow, that was a nice segue, wasn't it? <laughs> Back to the future. Biff Tannen was elected president on this date in 2016. What reality timeline are we in? We don't know. Uh, we were trying to figure that out. So happy birthday goes out on this date too. Hungarian physicist and astronomer Vucin Huang 
Hmm. Born on this date in 1219. Okay. Sounds like a Hungarian physicist name to me. Yeah, I'm sure. Vuken, why not? We also, migrated. born on this date in 1825, German brewing pioneer Rudolf Asahi. What, did somebody drop the deck on the floor and scramble it up? Yeah. Celebrating the same birthday, inventor of the footlong hot dog, Gerald Grosswein, or Grossweiner. <laughs> Grossweiner. You know, I don't care what you and your wife call it. Just move on. Okay. He was born in 1926. Okay, move along. Social media giant Seymour Video is 26 today. And also turning 97 today is movie legend, Ness <laughs> Romer. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. Finally, happy birthday to our good friend, podcaster, and awesome geek, Susie Murph. And that's the way it was on this day in alternate history for September 6, 2020. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, marching band. For the next bit, I just had a feeling that Abby Fallmacher wouldn't want any part of an alternate reality. So she pulls us back to real 2020 in this sketch. And now, as is tradition here at Technorama slash Comedy Forecast and Friends Live, we are joined by the owner of Midling Fair's Venus Arms Hotel and Towers. But you might know her better as the president, CEO, CFO, and subscriber to HBO of the Little Wicker Basket Company. Please welcome Miss Abby Fallmacher. Where's my applause? I usually get applause when I show up to save your show. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, usually there's an audience here to take care of that, but uh, let's get to the reason you're here. Right. And it's not because I love Zoom calls. It's like talking to a screen full of uninteresting postcards. I'm here to announce the latest addition to the new line of Little Wicker Basket products. Little Wicker Baskets. They're, They're everywhere. everywhere. And what do you have for us this year? Well, in the middle of this pandemic pandemonium, I I, thought... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What what was that about a a pandemic? Yes, I've been listening to you and this alternate reality mayhem and foolishness. Well, Abby Fallmarker is here to drop some truth. That's why today I am announcing the Little Wicker Basket Stay at Home or Stay Away From Me collection. That's a work in progress. We're still workshopping the final name. I see. Well, what what is in the collection? I'm going to start with the item that we put into production as soon as this whole thing started. Little wicker toilet paper. Uh, um... I know. This one's a little rough. We didn't have time to smooth out all the details. Well, how... To be, how exactly does little wicker toilet paper work? Amazingly well, in our test market, we found that people make a single roll last for a very long time. Yes, I would imagine you'd only want to use a little bit at a time. As little as possible. But that part of the crisis is over. We saw the writing on the bathroom wall and decided to move on to other products to help. Such as? Little wicker face masks. Okay, now hold hold on. How 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 would that even work? Air goes right through your wicker baskets. We didn't make them out of little wicker baskets. Oh, good, that's the relief. We made them out of little wicker toilet paper. We have to use that stuff up. We have a whole warehouse full of it. All right, but my my point is that wicker is full of holes. Oh, don't worry about that. We coat each mask with a layer of that Flex Seal stuff. It's completely airtight. How do you breathe? Look, we can't be bothered with every little detail. I don't know. 3D print something. Okay. All right. Fine. Is that everything? Oh, no. I've saved the best for last. The Wicker Adjustable Cocoon, or WAC for short. And how does that work? You just take a spool of our patented little wicker thread and wrap it around yourself until you are completely encased in it. Then you can go out and about and you don't have to worry. Why is that? 
when people see you coming, no one will want to get within 20 feet of you. Okay, okay, that's fine. But what about tight spaces like on a bus or a subway train? Seriously? You really think you can sit down while you're wearing this thing? Well, it sounds like a lovely, lovely collection. I'm sure it will prove to be very popular. It better. Did I mention the warehouse full of toilet paper? Yeah, I think you did mention it once or twice. Okay, then. That's all I've got. I guess that means it's time for me to turn things back over to the Completely Wet Show. Completely Wet? Yes, it's obvious the three of you are in denial. Hmm. On that note and that sound, thank you for being with us again this year. As long as the check clears, I'll be here next year, too. And remember, everyone, little wicker baskets. They're They're everywhere. everywhere. Uh, They're everywhere. I'm sorry. I was on mute. Yes. Well, thank you, Ms. Fallmacher. All All right. We can forget all about her reality and get back to our not reality. (laughs) You'd think this would be. A whole lot more fun uh, if we had an audience. We have an audience of one. What you people can't see on the other end is Charles up <laughs> in the corner. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> he's our gauge whether any of this is working <laughs> or not. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> we just busted that fourth wall right out, putting a whole yeah. new addition on the house. <laughs> it's very, very roomy in here now. Yeah. Every year when Chuck Craig and I sit around and brainstorm about the show, some recurring themes seem to appear. This year, it was lists. We had all sorts of lists. Now, you've already heard some of the items in the On This Day in Alternate History segment. We also had two other lists, and I tried to take what we came up with and turn it into sketches. You'll hear one now and another one in just a few minutes. The things we were going to do this fall kind of got changed. You mean no Taco Bell like pumpkin spice tacos? You? No. That's still happening. Oh. Too bad. (laughs) I mean, everything is different. For instance, remember that con we were going to go to in the Cradle of Liberty? Uh, Babies are us. Um, Didn't they go out of business or something? No, I mean Philadelphia. I got a note from the organizer saying that due to unforeseen circumstances... That was kind of a Uh church decay thing, but (laughs) they had to cancel a Greater Philadelphia Cheesesteak Artery Clogacon. Oh, dang it. I already sent them money. It was like a weird registration form thing, too. Uh, You had to put down your LDL cholesterol numbers. Well, that's a bummer. But at least we'll get to go to the Expanse Convention in Toronto. Hmm. Nope, 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 nope. Sorry, they had to lower the cap on admissions. You mean... That's right! The Expanse Convention is contracting. (laughs) Stupid OPA. (laughs) I was looking forward to that one. Uh, It was going to make up for the fact that I I can't go to my favorite convention for fans of T-Rex. Oh, 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 do do you mean the one? Yeah, do you mean that one? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that one I do. Uh, The Bang of Gone Get It On Song Along Con with special guest King Jong. (laughs) Man, that guy's everywhere. Well, someplace that he isn't is at the fun Saturday swap meet I usually go to. But it says here that it was canceled out of an abundance of caution. What the heck does that even mean? I have no idea. But uh, what kind of swap meet was it? Uh, Computer parts? uh, Disney? No, 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 no. Nothing like that. It was the used, unwashed door handle collector's flea market. (laughs) You know, they they didn't even announce a, a, a reschedule date for it. I don't understand. Hmm. Maybe maybe that's for the best, but cheer up. You can always go to the annual mime convention. Have you seen their karaoke contest? <laughs> well, I've certainly never heard it. And nobody beats their trapped-in-a-box invisible cosplay. Hmm, uh-oh. I just got an email from that con. What'd it say? Nothing. It's a mime convention. Come on. It's, but it's canceled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Uh, you can still go to the fan con. Uh, I'm going next week. Oh, do you mean the one in Boston? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to save you a trip. Uh-huh. I was going to go too, but I got an email from them saying that in order to flatten the curve, like what does that mean? <laughs> They're going virtual. Here, I'll send you a link. Okay. Oh, man, that sucks. Hey, look at the bright side. They picked up a sponsor. What's the convention? 
Oh, it's the annual get together for fans of the old PBS series Zoom. And they're sponsored by Microsoft now, so they have to use Skype. <laughs> That's very, very confusing. <laughs> And what do you make of this one? The notice for this con says that it's being changed so they can observe proper social distancing guidelines. What is social distancing? Is that new? No. no. Uh, us geeks and nerds have been doing that for years. Oh, know. that. Yeah. yeah. But, What's the event? Girl. Yeah. What's the event? Uh, the San Jose Agrophobia Support Group. Now <laughs> it'll take place in an open field in the middle of Kelly Park. Ooh, well, I hope everyone can make that. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, what isn't fine is that they canceled the convention we were going to that was going to be all about Vulcan. You mean? Yep. The LLAP con was DOA, and when CBS told them to shut down ASAP because they used TOS pictures to promote the con. <sighs> Jeez. Stupid 2020. I know, right? Well, maybe we better move on to the next segment. Yeah, before it and we get canceled. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he says, taking over with Charles to make sure that that didn't happen already. Oh, yeah, the, the feed it. went down. Sorry. No, we, we still got the green light. No, we're good. Okay, no. okay good. <laughs> you know, there's always that one skit or sketch that gets put off until the last minute. With so much other prep work going on, the note to write a Caprica coffee commercial kept getting pushed to the back burner. Well, with two hours until showtime, I finally got a chance to sit down and write the skit. Here we go. Well, now, normally the Technorama Comedy Forecast and Friends live show doesn't have a sponsor, but, well, these aren't normal times. <laughs> no, they're fine. They're fine. They're fine. With that in mind, please welcome our sponsor. Hi, welcome to Caprica Coffee's Coffee Shop, Coffee Bar, and Coffee Express, where every cup of coffee is just $2. Small, medium, large, extra large. Even our Caprica Coffee Coffee Cauldron is just $2. We know that you come to trust Caprica Coffee, or as I like to call it, Caprica Coffee's Coffee Shop, Coffee Bar, and Coffee Express, to come in and get the calm, relaxed, totally chill atmosphere that I'm demonstrating right now. But in these times, it's not really possible to have everybody come into the shop, sit, kick back their feet, and calm down, especially when you're trying to follow strict CDC guidelines. That's why we're introducing Caprica Coffee's Ready to Strain Stein O. Joe. It's perfect for today's complicated life. Just walk up to our walk-up window and order any one of our 17 varieties of coffee, everything from Arabica to Zarabica. We've already got the beans ground up. We pour those into a Caprica Coffee's ready-to-strain Steino Joe, add hot water, and hand you the mug. But wait, you say. As if I could, I answer. That's not right. I don't want to drink the beans. Of course you don't. And you don't have to. Just drink the coffee straight through your face mask. We like to think of it as your go-anywhere, always-with-you coffee filter. Brilliant. Well, that's all the time I have. Remember to stop by Caprica Coffee's Coffee Shop, Coffee Bar, and Coffee Express today, where we always validate your parking. No, really, just ask us. We'll come outside and tell you you did a great job parking. Okay, bye-bye. Whew, well, that guy's gone now. I no think we kidding. get to move on. I was catching a buzz just being near him. Exactly. Now that, that gets just started in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last year at our live Dragon Con show, we invited Zach Levi to be one of our guests, but unfortunately, he respectfully declined the offer. Yeah. Maybe you should have just uh, put on the application that your name was Chuck, you know, because he's on the show, Chuck, you know. And I have the shirt that says Chuck, you know, the whole thing. Well, maybe you should have just changed your name to Shazam. Yeah, that was a missed opportunity. <laughs> but this year... We inevitably, we invited a celebrity who did accept our invitation. Unfortunately, he's, uh, well, you'll see. Yeah, okay. It's time to enter the media corner. That's my line. Yeah. Welcome to Blockhead Video. Hey, where can I find some good information about films and movies and motion pictures on film that move? Over here in the media corner. I love it. That's right. Our special guest here in the media corner is none other than Mr. Danny Hillcrest. Hey, Danny. Hi, Danny Hillcrest here. Yes, we know, Danny. But I'm not sure I do. <laughs> okay, Danny, we invited you into the media corner to talk about some news you've uncovered. Can you tell us about it? I sure can. I found out in a discovering way that all of Hollywoodland Tinseltown's top directors will all be working on new projects in just a few weeks. Wow, that's great. Not really. 
Okay, why do you say that? Well, the way the directors got their assignment job gigs, it was kind of weird. Basically, some top executive producer, associate gaffer, put the title names of a ton of movie films into a hat. Then every director put their hand in and picked out a project. Hmm. Are you telling me they just randomly pick movie assignments for all of these Hollywood directors? No, you said it better. <laughs> all right, well, cheer up. How bad can this all be, really? Fortunately, and by lucky luck, I have the list of assignments. Oh, great. Okay, can we read it? We wouldn't have much of a sketch if we didn't. <laughs> I love it! All right, I'll go first. Michael Bay will reimagine a classic with Beaches Quarantine Edition. This time, when Cece has to race to get to Hillary's side, there's a lot more explosions and transformers and explosions. Ooh, I can't wait for that one. Quentin Tarantino gets behind the camera for The Muppets Take Manhattan with a special guest appearance by Snake Plissken. Kermit and the gang have 24 hours to rescue the president of Disney Plus from Oscar the Grouch. Yeah, that's right. Quentin passed up doing a Star Trek movie for this. Hmm. And James Cameron takes the swing at reviving one of a, his classics, Aliens movie, by pulling in another franchise. Get set for Aliens versus Rocky. And in a weird twist, Sylvester Stallone's part will be played by Rocky the Squirrel. Hey, Rocky, watch me pull a xenomorph out of my hat. Again! Hey, it's my line. <laughs> Ridley Scott is going to redo The Wiz, only this time the Emerald City is 2059 Los Angeles, and the Tin Man is an asteroid, and Sigourney Weaver is oddly cast as all the munchkins. The Tin Man's an asteroid? Okay. You know, some most of these films have moody darkness to them, but I'm sure Edgar Wright will keep things light and fun and light. He gets to remake The Elephant Man. Yay! I can't wait to see Simon Pegg in the title lead role, because when he uses his big flappy wings to fly, it will be humorously hilarious. <laughs> and Clint Eastwood will pay honor to the classic Prince movie, Purple Rain. Oh, good. Yeah, and now, except for now, it's going to be about jazz and star Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. As long as there's a, an old Gran Torino in it somewhere, I'm good. I'm there. <laughs> Get off my lawn. Tim Burton got <laughs> Titanic to remake. This time around, the ship hits some sort of odd-looking black and white spirally thing in the middle of the Atlantic, and Johnny Depp will have a cameo as lifeboat number three. Ooh, <laughs> he's marvelous in everything. Actress Olivia Wilde, fresh off her successful acclaim directing the movie film Booksmart, will take a step backwards and direct a remake of Tron. This one will go beyond virtual reality, too, because underemployed actor Bruce Boxleitner will actually come to every screening in every theater to play his title role in person. Keep your feet off the floor, because Bruce loves to run through the aisles when he recreates the light cycle scene. Hmm. Okay. And Robert Zemeckis will take on The Weekend at Bernie's with Keith Richards as Bernie. Uh, it would be like Schrodinger's cat of movies. Uh, is Bernie really dead, or does he just look that way? Hmm. Or smell that way. I don't you know. Know, but the directors didn't just pick up movie title names. There were also a bunch of TV shows in the hat. Oh, uh, Really? They're still trying to make TV shows into movies. Yeah, come on, Chuck. Uh, we'll pick it up. I, I think we should give them a chance. It, it could be good. I don't know. Let's see. Okay. The first one is Ron Howard's big screen adaptation of The Andy Griffith Show. Okay. It'll star Arnold Schwarzenegger as Barney Fife. Going to take Telma Lou up to Mount Pilot for a picture show. And Danny <laughs> DeVito as Sheriff Taylor. Oh, that ought to be calming. And to bring in the younger crowd, Cardi B is. Aunt B and K-pop band BTS as OP, the whole band. The wow. whole band! Steven Spielberg gets to turn Lost into a movie. The good news is, based on the TV show ending finale, he really doesn't need to finish it. <laughs> yeah. And Oliver Stone picked up Gilligan's Island with Samuel Jackson as the professor. There's a mother-loving hole in my mother-loving boat. Someone get me a coconut! <laughs> 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 Martin Scorsese is going to bring back bosom buddies on the big screen, but this time with Tom Hanks and Peter Scaleri reprising their roles. Mm -hmm. Only this time, they'll be playing women actresses, playing men who are pretending to be women, who will be played by Viola Davis and Margot <laughs> Robbie. Did that make your head hurt? Jordan Peele is going to do a scary live action version of Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, Jordan is so hot right now, no one has the heart to tell him Wheel of Fortune is already live action. <laughs> 
All right. And Patty Jenkins, the director of Wonder Woman, will take on the challenge of a lifetime when she directs the big screen version of The Big Bang Theory. There's a lot of bigs in there. That's because the studio contract said the movie had to include a laugh track. Bazinga. Good luck, Miss Jenkins. And finally, oh, finally, <laughs> we got a finally in here. <laughs> Wes yeah. Craven, the master of horror, is returning from the grave just so he can direct Baby Shark, do, 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 do. the movie. That's right. <laughs> the earworm that gets deeper into your head than it's a small world after all. We'll haunt your nightmares forever. Wow. That is some weird stuff. Wild and wacky stuff. I'm right. I'm looking forward to it, he says, trying to sound enthusiastic. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to not see any of these at my local theater, wherever that is. You don't watch movies anyway, Danny. I uh, know. Oh, oh, right. well, hey, where are you off to? Oh, I'm headed to the drive-in. It's not even dark. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> somebody skipped ahead in the script there. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> There's not even going to be a movie for hours, Danny. Movie. Uh, you guys do realizingly know that a drive-in isn't in a building, right? No, Danny. You see, what they do is... Uh, no, it, Craig, Craig, stop. stop, stop. Oh, okay. Just let it go, man. Let it go. All right. Yeah. Go so, ahead. why are you going to the movie, drive-in movie, Danny? Ooh, well, they have this amazingly awesome, huge painting of a snowstorm at one end of the park. Oh, that Banksy. And what do we think of next? It helps me maintain and keep my popular, famous, calm state. I love it. Huh. Bye-bye. Bye, Danny. Normally, when Chuck, Craig, and I do the show live, we're able to make on-the-spot decisions about pieces to cut or to change or to shorten. That wasn't the case so much with Zoom and Twitch, because by the time one person saw the note, they may have already finished the entire bit. So everything pretty much was the way it was originally written. We also didn't realize that there would be a way for people who were watching the show live to interact with us. So for the next bit, Chuck sent out daily notices on Facebook, gathering up responses. All right. Uh, we, we, last week, we asked our virtual audience on Facebook to take advantage of their predictive text on their mobile devices. Mm. Some of you on this show actually helped participate in it. Thank you very much. And we gave you a sentence based, uh, we said, construct a sentence with the predictive text on your mobile device based on a different start word each day. We wanted to see how good Apple and Google's AI really is. So here are some of the highlights. Okay. All right. Brace yourself, kids. On Monday, the start word was the last thing that you ate. And we got replies back like, Patty says, pizza and power are the most important things that you can do to make people happier. And pizza. And pizza. (laughs) Uh, Cynthia says, yogurt and blueberries are the best way to make a cake for your favorite tomatoes and vegetables. Because, you know, they like uh, their their blueberries and yogurt. Uh, Crystal says, muffin cake is the only way for them to go back in time. (laughs) I knew it wasn't a flux capacitor. It's muffin cake. Yeah, or a phone booth. Anne says, yogurt can be used to make cement. Really? And I think it will help with your body weight gain. (laughs) Wait for it, kids. It gets better. Yeah. And Kevin says, Raisin Bran is the same problem with you all. (laughs) I think he was shaking his finger when he said that. On Tuesday, the start word was your favorite color. Scott says, taupe has always happened when we went to our old school. I hate it when taupe happens. You need a shirt that says taupe happens. (laughs) When taupe happens. (laughs) Jonathan says, Crimson and I love you too, baby. (laughs) Martha, my sister, says, Orange Juice and I went to the media store and she can't drive. (laughs) Brian comes back with, Black and white are the best for the price of the time. Oh, invest in black and white. Uh, That's right. And on Wednesday, the word was the last word in the title of the last show that you watched. So Gary says... Counterpart is that one of those things that you need for a good job. Oh, I've been lacking counterpart all these years. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. That's what's missing. And Brian said, ate a little bit of Midgard serpent, and I will be there in a few minutes to talk to ya. <laughs> Midgard serpent. That should have been food of the day. Midgard serpent. Yes. 
<laughs> what are you serving? What's your uh, fish? What's your catch of the day? <laughs> or serpent? <laughs> so Lathrop says theory, of course, is not that bad, but it is still the same thing as others, as the others. Hmm. Okay. And Patty chimed in and said, Wars. I wonder what she was watching. Wars in the future are going to try to find how much money they have. Wars in the future are going to have to try to find out how much money they have. (laughs) Budget is important. On Thursday, we asked the audience, just pick a day of the week. So we got a couple responses on this one. Adam says, Thursday was a great night for the first weekend in a new way to see the family. Hmm. Well, Thursday is the first night in the weekend. I'm all on. Scott says, Wednesday night before the day job was done with my schedule for tomorrow afternoon and then we will need to get some stuff for lunch and then I'll go see you later. Sounds like one of those four-year-olds that doesn't know when the story is. I was getting more excited as the sentence went on. (laughs) Danny says, I'm not going to do this as Danny Hillcrest. It was a different Danny. Yeah. (laughs) Friday night and I, Friday night and I have come home tomorrow morning and then I can pick up the boysenberry. (laughs) Okay. And finally, where's the audience Applause there, Chuck. And finally, yes, the last one here, finally. (laughs) We asked your mobile device to make sense out of the last vegetable you ate. Scott, peas are a great little addition to this game, but it's not really fun to play with. (laughs) CA says, peppers and onions and cheese and a few other things that make me happy. Aw, Charlotte says, onion rings and the workers are going to spend the night with us and we will take care of them for the rest of the week. And then Ken and I are leaving for the next few days to see if we can get help. <laughs> I think she needs help. <laughs> yep. She doesn't need it. I think all this needs help. Yeah. And Jeffrey says, carrots, read this email and we'll be back on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday of next week. Oh, woof. Okay. How does any of this work? I mean, where does boysenberry come up in, in your predictive text anyway? Who knows? Yeah. Who, who knows? Who cares? But thank you for everybody who played along. We hope that you don't rely on your predictive text too much with sentences like that. But we may call upon you to play this again in the future. Yeah. Sentences like that, you could start a war by accident. All right. I think we're into our final segment here. So yes. strap in, people. This is where it gets good. As I've already mentioned, the digital media track panels were 50 minutes long. And by this point in the show, we're at about uh, the 43-minute mark. I had to make a judgment call at this point. Do I try to do the last sketch or end early and have a long outro section? I decided to go for it, but read as fast as humanly possible. That meant that inevitably I would make some mistakes but it seemed like the right call to make. Yeah, I'm going to try to see if I can make this work. Uh, I'm going to have Mr. Dick Bando read for us The Raven, fingers crossed. And you're welcome. We begin. Once upon a midnight dreary, while Dick Bando pondered, weak and weary. Dick Bando is never weary. And how can he be weary when he has a delicious cauldron of my Caprica Coffee's coffee right there? It's only $2. Guys, back to the poem, please. Uh, over a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While Dick Bando nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as if someone gently rapping, rapping at Dick Bando's chamber door. Can someone get that? Dick Bando is busy. Dick, please. Mm. Tis some visitor, Dick Bando muttered, tapping at Dick Bando's chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Well, duh. Ah, uh, distinctly, Dick Bando remembers. It was in the bleak December. Like, whoa, did someone say bleak? That's like my jam. I love it! Poem? Uh, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly, Dick Bando wished the morrow. Vainly, Dick Bando had sought to borrow from Dick Bando's books. Surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore. What kind of name is Lenore? I believe it is French. It means Hawaiian porch. No, that's a lanai. Why is there a porch in here? Dick Bando is supposed to be in the study. Ah, Lenore is the name of his dead girlfriend or his wife. I forget. Oh, bet his wife wouldn't forget if it was his girlfriend. Can we please just get back? For the rare and radiant maiden who the angels named Lenore. Nameless here forevermore. 
All right, this is confusing. Dick Bando just said her name is Lenore. How is she nameless? Uh, um, uh, Craig, I, are you following any of this? Yeah, sounds like Lenore is out on the porch reading a book. Shh, Olive, very, very quiet. Okay. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled Dick Bando. Filled Dick Bando with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of Dick Bando's heart. Don't say still the beating heart to an old person. Okay, let's skip ahead a bit. So uh, the narrator opens the chamber door and there's no one there. Wait, is Dick Bando being punked? No, no, just pick it up from here. Deep in that darkness peering, long Dick Bando stood there wandering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence there unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. See, Dick Bando was right. Dick Bando does say Lenore again. This Dick Bando whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this and nothing more. Well, actually, that makes sense because Dick Bando's house is so large that there are echoes everywhere. And even some Google Home Assistant speakers, too. Oh, so now this is a tech show? Yeah, hey, 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 this our thing. Go find your own format. Back into the chamber, turning all Dick Bando's soul within Dick Bando burning. Again, don't blame the Caprica coffee. Soon again, Dick Bando heard a tapping somewhere louder than before. Surely, said Dick Bando, surely that is someone at Dick Bando's window lattice. Let Dick Bando see, then, what there is, and this mystery explore. Did someone say explore and mystery? The name's Hart, Detective Hart, two A's, two T's, spell it right, say it right. No, uh, Detective Hart, there's no mystery here. Except how this nonsense poem ever became famous. The author has yet to manage to single rhyme the word Bando. Okay, let's skip ahead some more. The narrator opens the window and a raven flies in and perches on the bust of Pallas, uh, the Greek goddess of wisdom. And where is this statue? It's above the door to the study. Why would Dick Bando put a statue there? Everyone knows that if you put something above the door, it will eventually fall down and hit you on the head. I, I don't know, Dick. I don't know. Please, can we just go on? It's so sad to see a grown man cry. Ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on night's plutonium shore. And quote the raven, nevermore. The bird's name is Nevermore? Is that some kind of hippie name like Moonbeam? Or Steve? Can we skip ahead some more, please? But the raven sitting slowly on the placid bust spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till Dick Bando scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave Dick Bando, and Dick Bando's hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, nevermore. Kind of a one-trick pony, isn't he? Like he's expressing himself. Basically, yeah. Okay, let's skip again. Uh, now the narrator begins to talk to the bird. Uh, sure, when somebody else does it, no one stares at him. Dick Bando does not speak to birds. Dick Bando barely speaks to people. All right, fine. Let's go down to the end where uh, he's chatted to the bird. And uh, so there's a da which we can relate to right now that it's just wacky. Take thy beak from out Dick Bando's heart and take thy form from off Dick Bando's door. Quote the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of palace just above Dick Bando's chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeing of a demon that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er him streaming throws its shadow on the floor. And Dick Bando's soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. Wow, Dick, that was actually pretty good. Well, don't ask Dick Bando to read the sequel because there's plenty of things that rhyme with Dick Bando. He could come up with endless. There's Commando and Fernando and Alejandro and my personal favorite, Lando. Thank you. Hey, yeah, I think it's time to wrap things up. So much for classing up the place. Next year, let's get John Bell back. <laughs> hey. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hey. <laughs> yes, please, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I need that one. There we go. There you go. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. This has been wonderful. Thank you to the Digital Media Track for all of their hard work that they put in on this. There's just so much stuff going on behind the scenes that uh, has been a labor of love for the better part of the last year. And uh, again, thank you for you for tuning in and staying with us or listening to this later. Appreciate it very much. We'll hopefully see you again in person at Dragon Con next year. Yeah, we'll, we'll give you a bunch of awkward hugs. How about that? Yes, we will. 
You can find uh, me and uh, Bonnie here, my wife, at Comedy Forecast, all one word with the number four, dot com. And you can find Chuck and I over at Technorama. Uh, all right, go search for Technorama Podcast in the Googles, and you'll find us all over the place. And I'll be in the lobby signing Podcasting for Dummies <laughs> books. <laughs> hey, hey, you supposed to be plugging that? <laughs> Available for pre-order on Amazon, fourth edition, coming out soon. There you go. Thanks, Charles. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Sir Patrick Stewart. And I'm Clinton. Saying, that's That's it. it. We're We're done, 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 done. done, done. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Tracy Babian, co-author of the Carlson Chronicles podcast. My husband, J.A. Babian, the main author, had a triple stroke in the latter part of August of this year. Jerry was lifelighted to Tulsa, Oklahoma, with a brain bleed that the doctors thought they were going to have to do surgery on him which surely would have killed him. Thank the Lord they didn't. He survived that brain bleed and swelling, but he is in need of so much for his recovery. I have started a GoFundMe to help with all the costs that I just don't have. I retired back in April of this year so that I could take care of Jerry, as he was starting to show signs then that I just didn't catch. Little did I know this would be a blessing in disguise. He is fighting this setback of memory loss and 75% use of his right leg, arm, along with his cognitive speech. Considering the doctor said he would not make it, I consider him to be a miracle. Medicare has only granted 12 visits of physical and speech therapy twice a week. He needs at least six months worth of speech therapy alone. That is a total of $4,000 we need to pay up front that I just don't have. So far, we have had $775 in donations of the 10000 we need come in. Please donate today so that he can get his needed medication, therapy, and also help pay bills that Medicare just will not cover, even if it's only $5. I update this account so folks can see his progress. You can go to my Facebook account, Tracy Babian VO, to find the pinned link with the title Jerry Babian Stroke Victim Needs. Jerry says, thank you. I still have a lot to write on my stories that I want to get done. Please help me to achieve that goal. Thank you in advance for your donation. Tracy Babian.